Okay, hi. Welcome back to my channel, everyone. I'm so excited about everybody who's been viewing and subscribing. It's just been great. I'm so excited about the feedback. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you. If you haven't subscribed yet and you're interested, please do. Um, this channel is pretty much focused on family, on business, and on fashion. I think it encompasses all of modern motherhood. So if that is something that resonates with you, please check it out. Um, I will be having uh, regular videos, a regular video series about different topics, marriage, parenting, uh, what I'm reading now, developing a business. So if those are things that resonate with you, please consider subscribing. I'm really excited um, to talk to you today about something that's really near and dear to my heart, which is soccer. And I wanna to talk today about the art of coaching your own child. So whether or not you are your child's personal trainer or whether you're their team coach, or if you're just a parent who is supporting an athlete, I think this could be a great video for you to glean some insights from my experience as a player who was coached by my parent and as now a mom who is coaching uh, both my children in soccer. Lincoln, get up. Get up, Lincoln. I love soccer so much. It is so important to my family. I played in the Women's World Cup. My sister did two Junior World Cups. We both represented Ghana. Um, soccer is in our DNA. Uh, so it's really important to me that I am able to share my passion for the game and the gifts and skills and talents that I have with my kids. I think it's part of my legacy, um, but how to do that is the key question. And I just, you know, I don't purport to have all of the answers, but I think I have some important considerations for the process of parenting an athlete, coaching an athlete, supporting an athlete. I heard this year there's going to be a movie done about Richard Williams, who's the father of Venus and Serena Williams, who's a an outstanding coach and great role model. I think he was recently inducted into the Tennis Hall of Fame, rightly so. I can only imagine what the experience was like from his perspective and from both the perspectives of his, his two daughters. I can certainly relate to that. I know my sister can. I've joked before during speaking engagements that my dad was kind of like the African Richard Williams because he coached both of his daughters to the highest levels in the game of soccer. For this short video today, I have four considerations that I want to think about. Uh, but before I get started, I think we should set a more appropriate stage. I do think I feel most at home on a soccer field, so here we go. As I said, I wanna talk about four different considerations when you are parenting and coaching your child athlete. I started playing soccer when I was about eight years old. My dad was my soccer coach for the early part of my soccer career, and he was my private coach, my private trainer for the entirety of my soccer career. My sister also played soccer uh, for her entire life. He was her private trainer for the whole time, but he did not coach her teams for as long as he coached my team. So I just think it's really interesting to reflect both of us, my sister and I were able to play at a professional level, uh, my sister represented Ghana in two Junior World Cups. I played in the Women's World Cup. I also played in the W League. Soccer afforded me so many different special opportunities. I met so many amazing people. I had the chance to travel. I had so much opportunity to discover myself. Having my dad as my coach was really amazing because he and I grew really close. And I think it was really special because it's difficult for fathers and daughters sometimes to bond uh, over things that they have in common. But sports is such a good common ground for a young female athlete in particular and her father. And so my dad and I spent so much one-on-one -on -one time together, literally every day, practicing soccer. We would watch soccer games together. We still watch soccer games together. When it's the World Cup, if it's the year of the World Cup, we are just on a text chain. We are calling constantly, talking about the scores, talking about the games. You know, soccer's definitely still the primary point upon which my dad and I bond. 
Now I have two children. I have a 10 year old girl and I have a seven year old boy. Both have been playing soccer pretty much their entire lives. And I have been the personal trainer for both of them. And I have coached each one of their teams at different times, at different levels, the recreational level, kind of an intermediate level and at the club soccer level for my daughter who's older now. I would say that my experience was a net positive and I want to try to build upon my experience and make improvements where I can coaching my children in soccer. The first consideration is that sports is a really important tool to teach life lessons and to develop constructive and important habits to carry you through the rest of your life. So coaching your child in a sport is an opportunity to kind of extend the purview of your parenting to teach and instill the values that matter to you. Of course, how you touch the ball, your technique and your skill and your conditioning, your physicality, all of those things are important. But what's more important is the person that you are going to become. And sports, I think, is an important and powerful tool to help people reach their fullest potential. And this is something that I've talked about for many years at length. I've done research on it. I've contributed to different publications on this topic. I was even invited to give a TEDx talk on my experience playing soccer and how that empowers, how playing sports empowers women. You are constantly emphasizing the values and the habits that you think are going to help them be successful, then it's a win-win for everybody. Your child is becoming a better athlete, they're developing a talent, but they're also maturing and growing into the fullness of their potential. A second consideration for parents who are coaches is really making sure that you're checking yourself and looking at the opportunities that you have to lean into the coaching and lean out. Because I think when you are a parent coach, it's really important to understand that dance, the in-out dance. From my experience as a player, I know that there were definitely times where I needed, probably needed my dad to lean out, lean out a little bit and let me just experiment a little bit more and perform without so much scrutiny or without quite as much pressure. On the flip side, um, as I said, my dad was not my team coach for so many years. I think that there were times as I was going through different developmental transitions through adolescence in particular, that I could have used a little bit more of the lean in and I could have used a little bit more support, not just from the training side of things, but from the execution side and have him um, participate in coaching because he had the qualification and the experience to do so. So I think it's about considering where your athlete is, obviously considering your own skill level and your own suitability to service your child um, at that level. It's just going to take an awareness and paying attention to where that athlete is at different times. consideration for the would-be parent coach is to also see the potential for your role in demonstrating leadership and community service for your child. This is something that I'm obviously really passionate about through the different ways that I spend my time, but I think that I am most happy that my children have seen me demonstrate my values, that I believe in uh, doing things in service to others. I believe in leadership. It has been a great opportunity for them to see me in a role outside of our home, in a leadership role outside of our home, especially as a woman. I think it's been fantastic. Um, there is a shortage of female coaches in general, so it's great for me to be able to step into that as time permits. It's great for the girls to see me as a role model. You know, as they say, if you can see it, you can be it. I like for the girls to be able to see that, but interestingly, I really also like for the boys to be able to see that. For myself as a woman, especially as a minority woman, I think it's really important for other children who may or may not be minorities to see me in a loving, caring, authoritative role because I think it's going to influence the way they see the world. And when they have established trust and rapport and friendship and they've seen me as a mentor, I think it's definitely going to influence the kind of person they are in the world when they come into contact with other women who would be leaders in their professional lives or other uh, people of color. They will, their minds and their hearts will be open, uh, hopefully. <laughs> The 
final consideration that I have for parent coaches is to really be careful when it comes to remembering to consider your child beyond just the extent of that talent. So you may or may not be familiar with this folk tale. There's a great folk tale about a child who had a golden brain. And one day the child was injured and the parents discovered that, you know, his head was injured. The parents discovered that he was actually bleeding gold instead of blood. And so they realized that this child was special and he had this amazing talent. And so they were very, very careful with him. Um, they didn't let him play out in the streets. They were always trying to protect him, but they didn't tell him about his uniqueness. And then when he became an adult, they finally told him and they asked for compensation for having protected his uniqueness. And so he actually gave them a piece of his brain and uh, as, as compensation for having um, protected him all those years. As the story unfolds, we see that this person's entire existence is kind of reduced to this gift that they have. And while this gift is significant and important, it doesn't capture the entirety of who they are or their emotional spectrum. And I think that this is such an important story for parent coaches to consider, especially if you have a child that has a unique talent or a gift in sports or in music or in whatever it is. Uh, it's just important to realize that there's more to that child than that particular talent. And I really try to put forth a, an effort to make a balance between being dedicated and devoting and making sure we're getting our 10,000 hours invested in, into your gift and your talent so that you could reach a certain level of prodigiousness and pitting that against making sure you have other broad exposures and realizing that when it comes to your athletic career, we want it to be a marathon and it is not a sprint and there's more to develop in you and there's the unfortunate reality that you could sustain an injury that would derail your athletic career and I don't want you to be lost without that. I had many different injuries that were quite serious. I had that experience where I had not developed too many other parts of myself um, or had not discovered so many other parts of myself. Uh, I think that it was tough for me to make that transition when I was in college. I had a really bad concussion um, and I was narcoleptic for about four months. It was a scary time for me, not just because I wasn't sure what the outcome would be from the injury and whether or not I'd be able to play sports, but it was a scary time for me in terms of my self-identity and really trying to figure out who I was outside of the context of this game. So if you are a parent coach, this is something that I would also say is a really important consideration to try to continue to instill the value in the child that's beyond the condition of performance. And so, you know, that child can feel loved and valuable and useful and talented beyond just that single story of who they are. I don't just coach my own kids, I actually also train my own kids, and those are two different things. Obviously, coaching involves the entire team. It's really much more of a tactical focus and a conversation about how to implement and execute on what you know. Training is very, very specific and detail-oriented. Something I always say is practice doesn't make perfect, practice makes permanent. So I'm very, very rigorous when it comes to technical ability. Uh, with my kids making sure that they are executing exactly right because once those habits are established good or bad that's what's going to be uh, set in and in place for them right now i coach my daughter's club soccer team i have in the past coached my son's ayso soccer team i'm sure i would get mixed reviews all right so laya what are the best things and the worst things about having your mom as a coach? Well, the best thing about having my mom as a as my soccer coach is that she's very experienced, like she played in the Women's World Cup. And also she can see my individual talent throughout the team. It's not just a group team thing. She can focus on my challenges and the things I'm doing good at. Now I can improve and get better in different, different areas of soccer. And then maybe the not so great parts about having my mom as the coach. Maybe she's a little hard on me because she's my mom, so it's not like 
the coach was just being mean to me. It's just her. So, and yeah. Do you think when you grow up, do you think you'll coach your children? If you have children? Probably. Do you know any other people who, any other athletes, like professional athletes that were coached by their parents? Um, Serena Williams. Serena Williams was also coached by her parents. So she ended up being um, one of the best tennis players in the whole world. So, so hopefully I can get there one day in soccer because of my parents. I don't know what they say. Just answer the I'm gonna ask you some questions, okay? Okay. All right, so, has your mom ever coached your soccer team? Yes. So why don't you say, my mom coached my soccer team. Say it as a full sentence. Wait until I'm done talking. My mom coached my soccer team. Okay, you need to say it louder. Go ahead. My mom teached my soccer team. No, I didn't teach. That's not even a word. I coached your soccer team. Coach my so my Lincoln. mom coached my soccer team. Did you like it when your mom coached your soccer team? Yes. What did you like about it? I liked about it when she told me to do stuff. It felt like I was pushing my limits to do better and to play harder. Okay, what don't you like when your mom coaches your soccer team? How when she gets mad at me for doing something she didn't want me to do. What did she say? She said, she says, do that certain thing and then I don't do it. And then how does she react? Mad. Like what? Mad. Show me, show me. <laughs> Is that what she does? Yeah. Okay. Um, anything else you want to add? Well, I'm really thankful for what she did in my soccer for coaching me. I've gotten way better since last year and I developed more speed, power, and skills for this year's soccer team. Thanks, Link. Bye. It's definitely fun to be able to spend time with them and I know that I'm going to really cherish these times when they get older and they're no longer living in my home. So it's worth it. It's worth it for all of us in the end. We'll see what they do. The final thing, as always, something I always say is just please be sure to give yourselves all a lot of grace in the process. It's not easy to step into that role to take that responsibility to be both the parent and the the coach it's a lot of work to kind of negotiate and learn the art of flowing back and forth between those two roles but ultimately it's one that can be extremely powerful and rewarding for everyone involved it can be the foundation of an amazing relationship and friendship between you and your child